Hey there, I just want to say yoga can be for everyone. However, it is your responsibility to determine if you are ready and able to perform this workout video. If you are a family member, have a history of heart disease, high blood pressure, or are obese with any physical or medical condition that could be aggravated by a physical activity, please consult a physician before proceeding. If you are pregnant, also consider consulting a physician. If you have any history of injuries such as neck, back, shoulder, or knee, please proceed with caution and stop immediately if you feel any pain, lightheadedness, or nausea. The user assumes all risks. Thanks, and I'll see you on the mat. Hi everyone, and welcome back to Connection Yoga. My name is Kat, and this is Roscoe, killing a hedgehog off in the background. And we are here together today to break down another yoga posture. Another point of access for you to reach into your body and pull something out. Whatever it is, whether it's you're reaching for more mobility, um, more grounding, more whatever, there's a pose to access that. Um, today we are doing another inversion. We are continuing with this series with plow pose. So again, just like supported shoulder stand, I would typically not cue to this pose when um, I'm teaching online. Maybe in class it would be different where I could see people. But even then, it'd be something I would just generally offer if you'd like to do an inversion to close out your practice, you know, there's space for you to do that. Um, and then after a supported shoulder stand or inversion, plow pose is generally an appropriate counterbalance for you to kind of take out, but it can be quite the challenge. So there are definitely other options, but we're gonna start with talking about plow pose as Roscoe plows through this video. <laughs> um, so again, just like last pose breakdown, this is a supine inverted pose but on top of that now we are going to be forward folding into this pose while it can produce a range of benefits um, when practiced very mindfully and regularly it is important to you know remain relaxed and feel comfortable and not experiencing pain. If you are feeling pain, and I've definitely felt it in this posture, you just gently come out. You just say, okay, that wasn't for me today. This wasn't feeling great, right? You mean, you know, maybe you ask, you ask yourself what was the limitation, what you were feeling, because your shoulders, it was something. Um, you know, and then maybe one day, you, you know, you revisit it or you keep trying, um, but it is important to not push yourself too far here. Also, I would suggest to not perform this pose today as you listen. If you are experiencing diarrhea, have any eye problems, this can put a lot of kind of pressure in that range um, of your head because we're folded over um, in a supine inverted position <laughs> um, and that goes the same for anyone with a serious back or neck injury just don't try these poses it's really not worth it um, as well as pregnant women if you've been doing this regularly prior to your pregnancy and throughout cool but if you're pregnant I wouldn't do it either um, not until at least two months after you give birth then maybe you can start trying to do inversions and stuff again because it requires a tremendous amount of mobility and energy to do these postures so always work within your own range of limits and abilities and that's all that we need to do so First, I'm going to demonstrate it so you kind of have an idea of what we're looking for, what we're going to get into, and then I will break it down for you. So, here is my demonstration. 
Roscoe, you're in the way of showing them the full power of plow pose. Okay? So. Did you see the metaphorical plow in my body? <laughs> hey, you need to get out of here, Scott. We're distracting our people. So, now I'm going to move into breaking it down. So, first you can lie onto your back, arms alongside your body, assuming you're waking up right now. If you've not done any yoga, do not get into this pose. Please hit pause, warm up your body, watch another one of my videos, and then revisit, okay? But if you're warmed up properly, we can proceed. Feet are brought in with bent knee, just behind the sit bones, tailbone pressing down the full length of your spine, felt here, inhale into your space, exhale, start to pull the knees in towards the face, press the arms and curl the pelvis until the legs are over your head. So feet don't touch the ground at first. You walk yourself in. If your feet reach that level, that's cool. Feet are flexed. Hips are stacked over the shoulders here, creating this plow sort of vibe. And then if your shoulders allow it, you can lace your fingers um, under your body and extend your arms. It's a little difficult for me sometimes, so I'm just gonna keep my arms grounded and supporting my upper back. You're going to press your shoulder blades down to kind of lift your chest, open the upper back a little bit more. And that's about it. To come out, you're gonna bend your knees by your ears and slowly lower one vertebrae at a time. So, unlike supported shoulder stand, um, which requires a lot of effort to keep your weight from collapsing down on you. This one, most of your effort is really coming from a mobility perspective of, can my legs straighten all the way? Can they reach over my head? Do I need to bring in a modification, which we'll talk about, or not, you know? And that's okay. The effort really is going to come in maintaining your breath because you are folded forward. So by nature, your breathing capacity has been compromised slightly, but you want to maintain the integrity of that and the integrity of your spine by pressing from your shoulder blades up to your hips. All right, so we're going to go back into it and explore that a little bit more. So, pressing your shoulder blades. Now, some people might say you can bring your arms overhead here. I recommend you do not. It can really over mobilize your shoulder and open you up and expose you to something you really don't want. In poses, inversion poses like this, we really need to stay with our body's natural geometry to keep in alignment, okay? So sh hips over the shoulders, arms down by the sides or laced. And this is plow pose. So if you feel that in your spine, in your neck, anywhere, you know, take note of it and see what you can do to modify to support um, that region of your body. Okay, so squeezing the inner thighs can help lift your pelvis, drawing your tailbone through that spine, always lengthening. We talk about it all the time. The goals are in yoga are really to lengthen and strengthen. It's not about as much of how much we can bend. It's about lengthening our spine um, in most poses, including this one. So. Something you can do if you're finding that your feet are not near to the ground, that's totally okay. So first option are blocks. So place them at the end where your feet would be coming over. 
Um, we'll see if I knock this down or not, um, but we're gonna try. And then prep the same way that you would, slowly curling your pelvis up as your feet reach for the blocks. You can maybe bring your hands to your low back and feel the support and your toes find the block. And your hands can reach out, squeeze the inner thighs, press the tailbone to the sky. All right, and this is just one. If you want one less block, boom, one less. You could try that one. The next option though, is just do it over to the wall. So I'm not gonna move my mouth, I'm just gonna flow right into it. So same as before, bring the feet to the wall behind you. And that way you don't have to even, you know, worry about the height, worry about knocking the block over, you know. But you can still reach your spine tall and do everything you need to here to achieve the benefits of plow pose without putting your body at risk. These are the most important things to me. I don't want to hear about anyone hurting themselves. Yoga is here to help us. Um, and alleviate pain and unhappiness in our lives. So that's, that's the most of it. I've talked about breathing. It's important to maintain that space for your lips, ribs or your lungs um, in that pose and not collapse. You know, that, only, that also collapses your back. So we don't want that. Um, Another one that we didn't talk about a modification is if you're feeling this a lot in your shoulders, a modification that we did in supported shoulder stand you can bring back here is rolling up some blankets and putting them under your mat or just under your shoulders here. And it'll give you a little more cushion on your bones, on your shoulders, and give you a little bit um, more support while you're going into that pose. Um, but with that, leave your head and your neck off of the blanket. So just supporting our shoulders so that we can start to lift our sternum up into the aligned position. So another option that you could use instead of a wall is you could put a chair behind you and then put that up against the wall. Um, and then the tops of your feet will rest down on that instead of pressing onto the wall behind you. Um, and then yeah, moving down to maybe a stack of pillows, your blocks, you know, and gradually your feet will find the floor. You know, gradually we work into these places. Yoga does not happen overnight. It does not just happen one day. For those people it does, good for you, but us real people, we have to keep showing up at our mat, keep being patient, and keep knowing that we're trying to do what is right, but honoring our body and the speed that it needs um, to get to these places. So take your time, honor yourself, and I love you all. I hope you enjoyed this other inversion. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, put them in the comment section below. I am more than happy to answer them for you. Otherwise, like this video if you liked what we did. If you would like a little more content, hit the subscribe button if you aren't already. And keep it real out there. Namaste.